Hey everyone, happy Tuesday and welcome to Live with Kim. Okay, so I'm always so excited to be here with you guys. Welcome. I'm trying something new, so just kind of bear with me a little bit as I'm kind of getting set up. But anyway, um, so if you're just coming here, oh, welcome. Hello to everybody in the chat. Um, and, you know, I, we have a lot to talk about tonight. I actually have three topics to talk about. So that's actually pretty cool. Um, we are actually going to talk about um, trying something, well, we're going to talk about, I should say, shop and pays and could they be the answer, although should I say, to some of our oversaturation problems in some of our areas. And you're going to have to kind of bear with me because I'm going to explain exactly what I mean as well. Um, and then on top of that, we have um, diamond orders versus not diamond orders, what I've been seeing in my own market lately, and whether you guys have been seeing the same thing, because I've been seeing a lot of inconsistencies lately um, with a couple of orders. And then finally, there is a strike happening tomorrow, and we're going to talk about that as well, and who's participating, who's not, whether it's going to do any good, whether it's not going to do any good. So we're going to get into those few topics um, as people are actually coming in tonight. So that's kind of it. It's a all door dash night. Um, but you know what? I actually had a pretty, you know, even though I talk mainly about DoorDash, I had actually a pretty decent like multi-apping week last week um, between got um, Instacart and a couple of my catering apps and Uber Eats. I even had a Grubhub. I had a Grubhub last week. Um, so there were definitely multiple streams of income coming in. So it's very interesting um, week that I actually had last week. So, you know, if we have time, we'll kind of get into my week and exactly um, what happened during the week. Thank you, Steve. So once again, hi to everybody in the chat, those of you who are just coming in. So with that being said, we are actually going to get right into it. But before I do, if you guys don't know this, I started my own podcast. So that's actually really exciting. It's now available right now on Spotify and and Google and somewhere else. But anyway, the link is in the description of this live. So if you get a moment, go check it out. And then on top of that, I have, when I'm driving, I have like a whole bunch of podcasts that I personally listen to. It's a good way of kind of biding your time as you're driving. Do any of you guys listen to podcasts, audiobooks? Well, I listen to podcasts. And one of the ones that I actually listen to um, is the Gig Economy podcast. And it's done by Jason Thierry, if he's a good friend of the shows and a whole bunch of all of us in the community. But, you know, it's um, info entertainment about everything gig related. He has a new co-host um, coming on and, you know, it's some funny stuff and really entertaining. So if you want to definitely go check them out, his podcast is in the description of this video as well. So definitely go check out Jason's podcast as well. You're, you won't be disappointed, I promise. So anyway, with that being said, so let's talk DoorDash and Shop and Pays. And is this somewhat maybe a solution to some oversaturations. I am not <laughs> going to say this is the solution because it's not. It's a 
maybe a solution to a little bit of our problems. And the reason why I'm saying this, and I'm going to give you a different perspective a little bit. So kind of stick with me just for a little bit. I talked about this many times in videos and also on my lives as well. And, you know, let's face it, we are seeing an influx of new drivers and we are actually seeing a lot of drivers not acquiring uh, not acquiring accounts the proper way and a lot of them are from other countries so what i've been noticing and you guys are going to have to leave it in the chat if you are experiencing the same thing but the one thing i've learned and i've learned this also on instacart i feel like it kind of pertains to instacart and a little bit of uber eats too grubhub i feel like is just kind of getting into the shop and pay game for me they only have right aid so i feel like this really doesn't pertain to them but what i am really <laughs> getting at is all these people who have all these illegal accounts do they really know how to do a shop and pay? And the reason why I'm bringing this up and I'm going to go into story time just for a little bit. So I did a shop and pay and this was like a couple of weeks ago and this has already been happening in my market. It's been happening for a while. And I know some of you guys have expressed <laughs> the same exact thing happening in cheer markets. But what I noticed, and there were literally, I was in a line of people waiting to get checked out at this one supermarket. And it happened to be all DoorDash drivers waiting to get checked out. And this one driver is just holding up the line and we're like what the heck is going on and the only thing i kept thinking was is what what is really going on like he's like i have to call support i have to call this person and it just seemed really suspicious and then every time the guy like went to walk away and came back we all figured out that he didn't have a red card and he needed to call somebody in order to get the red card because he didn't have it on his phone and he didn't have it and it was, was his first time doing a shop and pay and he couldn't communicate with the sales associate that was at the register. So it really made me think, do some of these people who have some of these illegal accounts, do they know how to do shop and pays? Is there a language barrier when it comes to shop and pays? And does this give us a little bit of a fair advantage over getting some of these bigger orders? And we all know that, you know, you can get some really decent orders when it comes to shop and pays. I mean, I haven't I mean, I've talked about this many times that, you know, shop and pays are really kind of saviors a lot of times and can add some really good value and uh, some good subtotals to your day, no matter what, <laughs> what the platform is. And I'll be honest, it was getting, my story is, is it was getting escalated and the sales associate he was actually also the manager. He was one who was ringing this guy up. He's like, dude, if you don't, basically, if you don't figure out what's going on, I'm really just going to ask you to leave because you're holding up a line. You're causing a commotion. You're going back and forth. No one knows what's going on. And it became really disruptive to the store to the point where he's like, at the end, he's just like, if you don't leave, I'm going to really just call the cops because obviously you don't know what's going on. You don't know what you're doing. And it's causing me to have a backup at my register. So yeah. And you know, this is exactly what it was. He was probably calling the person whose name was on the account because I will say that the person who was ringing the not, them up was very thorough as far as checking everything because I feel like maybe he thought something was off and I don't blame him. Like usually your instincts, come me coming from retail, usually your instincts are usually correct that you, you get that instinct, something is just off. And in this case, it definitely was. And he just actually ended up asking him to leave. So I'm going to pose this question to you guys. Do you think that 
by being able to do shop and pays, some of these people who have the illegal accounts can't do the shop and pays. Let me know right now. So just put a yes or no. Do you think it gives us a fair advantage? Yes or no. Go ahead. Don't be shy. We'll leave it in the comments right now. Are you guys shy tonight? <laughs> Anybody? Yes? No? Maybe so? <laughs> there we go. Seriously, thank you. Um, you say yes. I say I say yes. Wayne, you say yes. I'm I'm telling you, I think I think I think I might be on to something. So, you know, if you are a driver, and believe me, I was that driver. I hated doing shop and pays, and this was probably about two, maybe three years ago. Um. <laughs> I hate, I hate it. I'm like, I'm never doing it. I hate shopping for myself. Why am I going to shop for somebody else? And then I started honestly seeing the potential in doing them. And I'm hoping that maybe I can give you guys the motivation. I, <laughs> I'm hoping I can give you guys the motivation that if you don't like shopping pays, then maybe, hopefully, maybe, <laughs> you can start doing them to start generating money and getting that, you know, leg up on, you know, some of these drivers who it's frustrating, right? Some of these drivers who are working DoorDash illegally. I think it's frustrating. At least to me, it's frustrating because you have honest drivers like myself, like you guys, who just want to go out and you want to hustle and you want to get orders. And I feel like it's frustrating to me because I feel like people who are not using the system correctly and are abusing the system, they're taking away money from drivers just like me and you. And I think that's like the biggest problem I have. So it just really got me thinking, hmm, shop and pays. I mean, granted, it's not like I know some of you guys in your areas, you're going to have to let me know in your own individual areas. Let me know in the chat right now or in the comments if you're watching the replay. Um, with, in particular to, you know, shop and pays, you know, and I just completely lost my train of thought. Oh, anyway, I was going to ask you a question. It's basically what it was. And the question just went completely out of my head. There you go. Live, live, live YouTube for you. Let me think about it. <laughs> um, anyway, I just think that they are just taking advantage of the system. Um, and I, you know, shop and base. Oh, that's what I was going to ask you. Let me know in the comments in your area because it, it, I don't have it on my account. Supposedly, there are some areas that you can toggle on and off shop and pays and you can know whether you want shop and pays or not. So let me know. Has this come to your area? Because it hasn't come to mine. And I think I was just talking to another driver the other day. I feel like it would be like a really cool thing if during certain times of the day, if you can just do shop and pays in order to gain some of the money onto your totals for the day. Can any of you guys do that? Is it in your area? So you can toggle them on and off. Can you only toggle shop and paste? That's actually, I'm actually my question. I know you can toggle them on and toggle them off, but it wouldn't it be really cool if we actually had that advantage that you can literally just do shop and paste? I'm just saying. So I'm not talking about like all the time, but I'm talking like literally during certain times of the day. It might actually just give you that advantage over other drivers in your area, especially if you're oversaturated. Yeah, so Becky, it's a small advantage, percentage is low here of getting them and we're way oversaturated. You know, it, and, you know, that's the thing is, you know, it's not like they come every single order. 
Um, I know me as soon as, as long as they're like reasonable, like I actually just scoop them up. Not only that, but I feel like by completing more shop and pays, it really keeps you in the loop of that shop and pay priority that DoorDash has. And you still become priority on getting some of those shopping pay orders. That is like really, to me, another advantage, at least in my opinion, you know, by doing them, you can then become prioritized in it. So <laughs> I think we all wish we can do this, Tony. I wish I could toggle only LOP. <laughs> that would be um, the most amazing thing ever if that was actually a thing. Yeah. So anyway, so those were kind of my thoughts. And like I said, hopefully, if you're not doing them, hopefully, you know, you're going out and at least trying them, right? Try something new, get out of your comfort zone. You know, I, I feel like I'm living proof of getting out of my comfort zone. Like YouTube is getting out of my comfort zone, you know, doing shopping pays back in the day was getting out of my comfort zone, trying new apps, getting out of my comfort zone. So you never know until you try. So hopefully this might just motivate you to do a couple more to see if it actually helps you gain more money on your totals and gets you that advantage that you're looking for in your own market. But I completely agree with you guys. Like oversaturation is real. Slowness is real. Like it's crazy. So before we go on to the next topic, so real quick, and I forgot to say this in the beginning of this live, I had a snow day here today. Did any of you guys have snow in your area recently? Like schools were closed today. My daughter was home. We played out in the snow. I feel like I'm 50 years old just based on off of how much I played in the snow today. Um, pretty soon, like probably my back will be hurting, but it's it's all good. It was tons of fun today. But we had we had so we had so much we had snow today. We had not that we had ton, like we had probably about four ish inches. I know some of New Jersey had close to a foot of snow today, but yeah, there was no going out for me today. I know there are some of you guys who love to go out in the bad weather. And yes, there was a $3 peak pay almost all day today. But I swore that once I started doing this, um, like there's, I'm never driving in the snow ever again. And I literally am sticking, <laughs> I'm sticking to my word. I am never driving in the snow if I don't have to. <laughs> you know, it's true. Kim, you make it anywhere your comfort zone. That is so true. You know, you know, nice way to make us all, all jealous there. 75 degrees here today. No snow. I wish. You can come to New Jersey and we'll be more than happy to give you some, but I'm sure it's nothing in comparison to probably you guys, some of you guys out in um, the Midwest, but... Uh, thank you, Thomas. Really appreciate it. Okay, so, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll move on. But yes, so snow, snow day here. It was fun. I had a, I feel like I, it was, I, it was an unplanned day off, but I love it when you have unplanned days off and you're doing it. I actually got all my Valentine's Day <laughs> stuff ready for my daughter. I think she told me a hundred times today that she's going to school and it's Valentine's Day tomorrow. I said, I know. <laughs> but anyway, okay, moving on. So diamond orders versus non-diamond orders. Now I did drop a video about this yesterday. Was it yesterday or the, the day before? I can't remember, but you can go check it out. But you know, I appreciate all of your comments that you guys do on every single one of the videos. So definitely keep them coming. I try to respond to them as much as I possibly can, but um, please keep them coming. But I feel like there was like a lot of disconnect on what I was trying to say in the video versus exactly what happens. I'm thinking, well, maybe I need to explain it a little bit better and exactly what I was talking about and what's kind of going on in my area and see whether you guys are experiencing the same way, right? So 
And this has been happening. It just so happened that I'm like, you know what? This is happening way too often. And now I I feel like I need to talk about it because if it's happening to me, it's definitely happening to someone else out there. So I finally got in order. And I'm sorry, I don't have it to put it up on the screen. You guys can go check out the video, but I'm just going to explain it. So it was a stacked order. It was $23. One was a shop and pay. One was a restaurant. They were both in the same area, same complex. So I feel like it was, you know, it was almost like the same pickup besides the shop and pay. But anyway, besides the point. So shop and pay, restaurant, two deliveries. It was seven miles and I forget, 7.3, 7.9, somewhere around there. So as I'm looking at this order, first of all, I took it. Who wouldn't have take who wouldn't have taken a $23 order to begin with, even if it's going seven whatever miles? Would you guys have taken that? Actually, I'll leave this up to you guys right now. Would you have taken that order? I'll repeat it again. $23 stacked order. One was a shop and pay for six items. The other one was just a restaurant pickup in the same complex going at seven, I forgot, seven, three months, 7.3, 7.9, somewhere around there. Let me know, would you have taken that order? I'll let you guys, I'll, I'll let you guys leave it in the chat before I continue with my story. Donna, how are you? It's so good to see you. Okay, so it looks like people are saying, absolutely, you would have done it. Yep. Okay, I, I honestly, I don't think anybody wouldn't have done it. Really? Really, Gary? I said hello to the chat when I first began. Anyway. Hi, everybody. If you are just joining us for the first time right now, welcome and welcome everybody in the chat in case you missed it in the beginning of this live. <laughs> anyway, so I don't think anybody would have not taken it. Uh, I would hope not, right? $23. So tell me why. And you guys can help me explain it. Why? wasn't this a diamond. I'm in a diamond zone. I maintain over 50%. Actually, I maintain over 70% AR. So why wasn't this a diamond? Can anybody explain that? Mm. <laughs> oh, Gary. So anybody? Anybody have reasonings behind this? It was a non-diamond order. Why was it not a diamond? By rights, you know, the way that I understand diamonds, it's usually $2 or more per mile. Someone in the comment said that they changed it to $1.50 per mile. I don't remember seeing that anywhere, but I also haven't done the research behind it. Um, yeah. Anybody? Anybody can explain that? <laughs> okay. Hi, Gary. Hi, Tony. <laughs> Hi, Thomas. <laughs> Hi, Sarah Sue. Hi, Donna. Hi, Johnny. Am I, uh, I'm sure I'm missing a whole bunch of people. If I went through and said hello to everybody, we'd be taking up more time. So hi, everybody. Is, is, everybody, is everybody good now? <laughs> Anyway, can anybody explain why that's not a diamond? Going back to diamonds. Okay, so you think, okay, maybe it's a fluke. Maybe it's one off. Granted, I've been doing this more often. The very next order that came in, it was supposed to be a diamond. And don't quote me. I don't have it off the top of my head. It was supposed to be a diamond. And it was not a diamond. Literally back to back to back. 
Um, so is DoorDash messing with our heads? And I want to reiterate this because maybe I did not, maybe people just don't know me or my channel or, you know, what happens the way I do things with DoorDash, but I do maintain over 70% diamonds are a girl's best friend. I've been in the diamond zone since last year, I believe around this same time. I feel like it's DoorDash messing, <laughs> messing with us dashers. I'm telling you, like I, it's almost like they have us programmed to believe, oh, diamond, okay, take it. Oh, diamond, okay, go ahead and take it. And I am the reason why I actually made that video and the reason why I'm talking about it really tonight is I want you guys to be aware because it happens on the flip side too. And this I did not have a screenshot of, but the other day, I had an order for or it came through. I did not take it, but I believe it was like $7 and 50 cents and it was going like five miles, but that came through as a diamond. <sighs> what? So is DoorDash kind of trying to like push through orders that they want people to deliver? And if they put a diamond on it, do they think that it's going to get delivered because there's a diamond on it? Do they actually think drivers are naive and stupid we're not stupid right i just think it's a lot of yeah kindness is always free i know <laughs> it is always free except sometimes when i get passionate about doordash and some of their antics but anyway those were my you know food for thought so do you guys have any reasons why in some circumstances, in this case, it was well, it was probably a dollar twenty-five, it was a dollar, dollar fifteen, dollar twenty-five per mile in that last instance. I don't know. Like it just that to me, it just doesn't make sense. Except the only thing is DoorDash wants to get orders delivered. Are they playing games in order to get them delivered? Let's put, just, let's just slap a diamond on it, right? Let's just slap a diamond on it. Someone will take it because there's a diamond on it. We've programmed our dashers to know a diamond means I should take it. And guys, don't be fooled. Don't be fooled by some of these orders. But at the same time, don't be fooled if they present you with a $23 order and there's not a diamond sign on it and it's still a good order. Like a good order is just a good order, right? So... Be careful. Look at your orders. Analyze your orders and know what you're taking and take the orders that are definitely right for you. <laughs> anyway, yes, I am not in my studio tonight, guys. I'm sorry. I am not in my studio. So bear with me. I'm just not in my studio tonight. I moved for just a just for a little bit. <laughs> Don't worry. Still, kindness is always free. Just imagine the sign behind me, neon sign, kindness is always free. Just, just remember it's there. Dr. Pepper sign is usually right here. Anyway, it'll be back. <laughs> anyway, with that being said, that is, I hopefully I clarified the diamond versus non-diamond. Did I clarify that for you guys? Did I? Hopefully I did, because I feel like I there was a lot of misconfusion. Um, and I feel like people were saying, you know, that they are in a diamond zone, they're not in a diamond zone, they don't see diamond orders, and that's not what it was about. It wasn't about seeing non-diamond orders or it wasn't about seeing diamond orders. It was more about what is DoorDash getting at by you know, kind of doing reverse psychology on some of the drivers. Anyway. Okay. So with that being said, okay. Topic number three. Supposedly there's going to be a strike tomorrow. Did you guys hear about this? Um, anybody, anybody hear about this? Right. Put it in the chat right now. 
Did you hear? Did you hear? Are you a strike? There's a strike happening tomorrow. Did anybody hear this? Yes, no, put it in the chat right now. Okay, so Sarah, you said yes, you heard about it. Yep. <laughs> Protest, not strike. So, okay, so, er, er, okay, everybody's heard about it. So that's step number one. Okay, here is my question number two. Are you guys working tomorrow? Give me a thumbs up if you are working tomorrow. Give me a thumbs down if you are not working tomorrow. You know, we're going to get into, you're going to get into this. Steve, you cannot strike if you are not an employee. Huh. Okay, so people are working tomorrow. You know, I feel like since I've started DoorDash and also in, I mean, since I started DoorDash and I've started YouTube, I feel like how many strikes have or protests have whatever you want to put in there. How many have we seen over the past couple of years? Hmm. Yeah. I feel like we've seen only what, three, four, maybe in the past, like three or four years happening. I guess this is my take on it. Unless we have millions of drivers banding together and doing it all at one time, a couple of hundred, a couple of thousand drivers. It's is a drop in a bucket for DoorDash for, I think it was Uber, is it Uber and Lyft too? Um, I feel like it's just a drop in a bucket for them. I don't know whether any of these strikes honestly make an impact besides going and literally, you know, you can go to the media, great, you cause attention. Maybe it'll cause DoorDash to open one eye and go, yeah, I guess they're doing something. <laughs> but does it really have the effect? I personally don't see the effect of any of these protests going on. You know, I I believe in standing up for what you believe in. Um, and I know a lot of drivers are passionate for what they believe in. I just don't know whether this is the right way of going about it and whether it actually makes an impact to these companies to DoorDash, like I don't even know whether it honestly makes them look or even, you know, or they're just shaking their head, go out there, they go again. I'll just, I'll just put up, if there's a problem, I'll just put up a four or five dollar peak pay, and orders are still going to get delivered. And I think that's at least from a DoorDash perspective. I'm not going to even talk about Uber and Lyft because I don't do ride share, but their main goal is always getting orders delivered. They always have means. They are always there's always going to be a driver that's going to go out and get it delivered because they didn't either know about the strike. They don't watch YouTube. They don't know what's going on. They don't believe in it. They're part time and only work two or three hours per week. And I think that's another thing. I think a lot of well, it's statistically known, right? So, what ninety percent of drivers who do DoorDash are 10 hours and below so do it does somebody who works under 10 hours really care if there's a strike or not strike and how it affects them i just i don't know i, I think people just see this as a side hustle if you're doing under 10 hours and they're like eh, i'm just gonna go out and make a couple of bucks uh, i just like i said i just don't foresee stuff like this being um, that impactful. What do you guys think? Do you guys think it's going to be impactful? Yes, no, maybe so. Leave it, go ahead, leave it in the comments or in the chat. You know, 
Yeah, it's like a possibility all the legals aren't striking, so maybe more people will get frustrated with those situations. Yeah. And that's another thing. They don't know. They don't know that we're striking. How many, how many, let's take a guess. I don't even know. I wouldn't even know how to guess this. Would you guys know how to guess this? I don't know how you would guess this, but how many, how many, how many bot accounts do you think there really are out there in your own state? Because I wouldn't even know, honestly, how to even judge that. I mean, I can judge in my own area and what's going on in my own area, but that's just my own area, right? I think they're doing it wrong. They should go to their state if they want change. Taking a day off won't make companies change. It won't make companies change. Like it's gonna, it takes a lot to hit them where their pockets are. Yeah, and I agree, not enough drivers will participate. They, like I said, they would literally need like hundreds and thousands to millions of drivers to just not work. And I just can't foresee that happening. Now, as far as I'm concerned, by default, I'm taking the day off just because it's Valentine's Day and I'm spending it with my daughter and my husband and celebrating it. We're going out to dinner tomorrow night. So by default, I'm not working. It's not just because of, you know, the strike that's going on. I'm doing it because it's a holiday and that's what we do every single year. I don't, I just don't see it happening. I think honestly, we need, in my opinion, we need to catch the eyes not so much about fares and, you know, how much drivers get paid. I feel like that's the same song and dance. I think what we need to impact, to be honest with you, and get the attention of DoorDash and a lot of Uber Eats and even Uber and Spark are all these illegal accounts and all these bot accounts. Like, they might think it's a good thing because they're getting orders delivered, right? So when you go to any area, like a lot of these drivers are monopolizing the areas, right? So they're causing drivers not to get orders, but in DoorDash's eyes, well, we're getting, we're getting orders delivered. What do we really care? And I feel like a lot of times they're turning a blind eye to what's really happening on their platforms and something that's not right and completely bought. It's, it just, that's frustrating. I, I, I just don't, I don't, I don't get it. Oh, yeah. So anyway, so, so so am I working tomorrow? No, but it's by default. It's not because of the strike. I feel like, you know, to Gary's point, I think we as drivers need to get in more involved in what's happening in our own local states, our own legislation, like get involved that way. Something that's going to impact a change, not something that DoorDash is just going to shake their head and go, yeah, who cares? <laughs> At least that's just what I think. I agree. Oops. Nope. Walmart and DoorDash know the problem. They just don't want to fix it. They don't want to fix it mm. I, because they're getting orders. Let's face it. They're getting orders delivered, which is just crazy. They are literally putting, in my opinion, well, this doesn't shock me. It shouldn't shock anybody, but they are putting money and making money above what's right and what's happening in their own driver community. But we've already established, do they really care about their drivers? I'm thinking not so much, right? Just saying. <laughs> but anyway, so strike, here we come. I guess we'll kind of see the outcome if there is now is there ever an outcome i remember and you guys are gonna have to go go back to your thinking caps if you were doing doordash about three or four years ago there was a strike and it was during the summer if i'm not if i remember correctly correctly and i remember People were making a big deal out of it, but it wasn't a big enough deal that it made any impact. But wasn't it like a month or two down the road? That's when they actually cut us at that time to a $2.75 $2 base pay. Wasn't that the time that that happened? So 
you know, do, do does DoorDash and these companies look at this and sometimes retaliate in a, a negative way, not in a positive way. Now, do we know that the base pay got cut because of the strike? No, but couldn't you see them doing something petty like that? I can. You know, Gary, I agree with this. Honestly, as someone who programs, they can fix their issues in less than one day if they really wanted to. And that's the thing. Like they have, and I'm not a programmer by any means, and Gary knows this. Um, I am not computer savvy like Gary is, but Gary, you can probably answer this. Like, couldn't they just put in facial recognition more often and it would actually alleviate some of these problems? Like, when was the last time anybody did any kind of facial recognition or any kind of scan on DoorDash. I haven't done one in almost a year now. What is that saying? Instacart, they had me do it twice in like two two days back to back um, the other day, at least with Spark. I know there's still a lot of issues going on with Spark and I don't know whether they know how to fix it, but at least with Spark, I have to scan my face at least once a week. Like they can... They can, they can fix it. They're just choosing not to. I don't. Yeah. And this, uh, yeah, Uber Eats makes me do it all the time. Doesn't Uber Eats? I mean, I encourage it. Uh, like whenever I see it, I'm like, oh, thank God I'm doing honestly a facial recognition. But doesn't it come at like the most like unopportune time. Like I feel like whenever I'm getting down with a DoorDash order and I'm like, okay, I'm going to turn on Uber Eats now. And you go to turn on Uber Eats and you're driving and you're like, you have to take a photo. I'm like, darn it. And then I have to pull over and take a photo. But I know that it's necessary and I don't mind doing it if it's causing um, it to take people off the platform. But uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Um, something has to be done. So DoorDash, I don't know whether, you know, you're, you're looking, you're not looking. Um, but if you're ever listening to this, please do something about all these ridiculous accounts because it's affecting innocent and worthy drivers of making money anyway. Okay, so you checked with Sergio in Seattle is protesting. So they're protesting at airports, right? Like, I feel like with a rideshare, I feel like it's a little bit more um, noticeable when you do stuff like that. Because if you're not picking people up from airports and people are stranded at airports, I think it definitely sends a, a message. I just don't, I just don't think door, like there's nothing striking DoorDash, that would be like, ooh, let's pay attention. Like, I just don't think we're striking them where it hurts. And I think to me, that's the bigger issue when it comes to strikes specifically for DoorDash, not so much rideshare, but um, rideshare. Yeah, definitely. If, if you're protesting at an airport and people can't get in and out of an airport, like that's definitely an issue. I don't know. Anyway, on that happy note, um, so that's those are my topics for this evening. I feel like it went by quickly, right? I feel like all these Tuesdays just like speed on by, and the next thing you know, it's 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 time. Um, so I don't know what your weeks look like if you are taking off tomorrow for Valentine's Day. I hope everybody has a fantastic Valentine's Day. Be with the ones you love. Don't forget to give this girl a thumbs up and like this live. It is one of the best ways of helping this live get out to the YouTube community. I see 26 people here. So go ahead on the way out, give this live a thumbs up. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. And guys, that's it for tonight. I'll be back again next week. So if you're driving, stay safe. Remember, kindness is always free. I love you guys, and I'll see you next Tuesday. Bye, everyone. Peace out.
You heard it's got rules, it's got me.